Oh my goodness, there's a lot more participants than I expected. Thanks for being patient. Not gonna lie everyone, I am a second year. So this is actually my first workshop at SOP. So please bear with me. <laughs> Almost reaching 70. Thanks, Kayla. Oh, you guys are so nice. You're leaving a lot of my anxiety right now. Okay, I guess we can start at 4.03, and then I'll just have to check for late entries. Alrighty, I lied. It is 404. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, can you all hear me? I just want to make sure I'm not talking to myself. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Have a replied. Um, welcome to SOP and thank you for attending this workshop. So SOP is a scholarship opportunities program. And this workshop will have a particular focus on um, education, social ecology, and social sciences. My name is Aline Pham, and I'm a second year education sciences major, so um, I can relate to a lot of you guys in the audience. Um, and I am a student advisor at SOP, just one of them. So this is exciting because as I said, it is my first workshop. So I'll do my best to go over our services um, at our office and answer any questions you may have um, that you can type in the chat or raise your hand. But I think typing in the chat would be better so I can see a notification. Um, I am screen sharing, so it's more convenient that way. Um, if there are any awkward pauses, please bear with me. It's because I'm trying to look at my notes and also admit new participants coming in. But thank you all for being here. Um, the turnout is really great. <laughs> so. Oh, I have to, there we go. Okay. So this presentation will introduce you to many resources that you can use to identify suitable scholarships and create a year by year plan for your academic success. You're surrounded by a network of support, including the Office of Financial Aid, the Writing Center and us, SOP. So you should familiarize yourself with the mission and services of each of these programs above because we are different and oftentimes in our inbox, we get messages that should be directed to another office. Um, for example, Office of Financial Aid, that is where you ask questions about your financial aid, obviously, and UCI-based scholarships. That's a misconception that we get a lot. UCI SOP is um, an office that advises students to apply to uh, external scholarships. So we have 21 that we help students with, and none of them are, um, awarded by UCI. So that's an important distinction to make. So um, this is kind of an overall timeline of the SOP process. And so can I get maybe um, you guys to type in the chat what year you are 
just to gauge the age of the audience and what scholarships you may be eligible for. You guys just spammed it, nice. Okay, getting a good mix of all the years. Lots of firsts, freshmen. Welcome to UCI. I hope you're enjoying remote learning. <laughs> um, got a fifth year. Um, Burke, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but yes, there are lots of postgraduate scholarships that we advise for. In fact, most of them are postgrad, and I will go over some of the most popular ones with your majors in this presentation. Okay, so we have a good mix, but a lot of freshmen and sophomores. Um, so, the roles and services of SOP encompass three broad categories, outreach, advising, and recognition. So right now we are doing outreach by um, presenting this to you. So under the Office of the Provost for Teaching and Learning and the Division of Undergrad Education, we support high achieving undergrads from sophomore year to their year after graduation. So many alumni too. We encourage students to develop self-awareness, take strategic risks and compete for these prestigious awards. SOP informs UCI undergrad students for, as I said, 21 awards through various outreach efforts, including targeted emails, workshops, and presentations. And if we were in person, we would be holding this in our um, new office or in your class. Um, we also hold drop-in consultations. And by providing our students with strategic and personalized advising, feedback on essay and application drafts, access to past winning applications, which you can obtain by request, and mock interviews to prepare candidates. We guide them through a process of goal setting and self-discovery to strengthen, strengthen their rhetorical skills for essays and interviews. So if you go through our SOP process, even if you don't end up with a scholarship or you decide that they are not um, suitable for you, you have already gained so much um, knowledge and skills that you can apply to applying to internships, um, other awards, and jobs. And for those awards that require campus endorsement or nomination by UCI, SOP, our office, is in charge of that. So um, we convene the faculty review committee, conduct interviews, provide feedback, and write all the endorsement letters that will accompany your application as um, a scholarship applicant. So that's why the SOP process is really important because you basically, we get to know you on a personal level throughout the entire process of applying to a particular application. And during that process, the primary advisors are the ones who will end up writing basically endorsement interviews for you that look very good when you apply to the official scholarship. Okay, so enough context. These are the 21 externally and nationally competitive mayor awards that we advise students for. Um, we have just divided all these um, scholarships into two cycles. So first is the Explorers 11 that you see right here in fall quarter and the pre-applications begin in October and November. So some of you may have already applied, but if not, keep that in mind for next year. And after working with advisors for three to four months, again, I said this is quite a lengthy process, applications are submitted to external scholarship agencies in winter quarter, so as we're speaking. Um, we're actually getting a lot of news about the scholarship applicants and it's a very exciting time for SOP. So the E11 group includes all the undergrad scholarships as well as two one-year internships for graduating seniors, the, Cap the California Capital Fellows Program right here, follow policy fellowship in the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, and the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace Junior Fellows Research Program in Social Sciences and Foreign Affairs. So the other cycle is in April, Trailblazers 10, which starts in spring and pre-applications will um, be for the 10 awards that you can use after graduation in the US or abroad including graduate study awards and our most popular scholarship, which I'll talk about later on in more depth, the Fulbright US Student Program, which includes the English Teaching Assistantship, so I'll refer to that as the ETA, the Binational Business Internship, and the Traditional Study or Research Grant, which means that you can get a grant for research or for grad school abroad. And students work intensively with our staff and writing specialists over the summer and applications are submitted to external scholarship agencies in early fall. 
So if you are interested in any of these Trailblazers 10 awards and your deadline will be coming up based on your year right now, I highly suggest you, you know, pay attention in this workshop and get started on SOP prep and all the services we have to offer. The awards in italics here um, require or strongly encourage campus evaluation and endorsement. So that means that you'll have to go through that process that I um, went over a few minutes ago. Okay. So SOP prep course and learning objectives. I mentioned SOP prep and you guys might be like, what is that? Um, our office just launched this, this course um, called SOP prep and it is online and it does not count for any credits, but it is on Canvas. And it's a valuable resource that supports sophomores to recent graduates in developing self-awareness of their intellectual and practical leadership values and goals. And during the exploration phase, prospective scholarship candidates watch videos and complete journal assignments that target specific learning objectives. So for example, you'll learn to describe models of intellectual and practical leadership articulate discipline specific educational goals and match them with key resources. So that includes finding potential faculty um, letters of recommendation and draft a time management plan to achieve the certain scholarship goals that you want to. And our scholarship or student advisors, so people like me, will provide personalized feedback and encouragement on each of your journal entries. So during the mapping phase, You'll learn to write a vision statement for future original contributions, take a virtual advisor quiz um, in Qualtrics, which will help you determine which potential scholarships are best fit for you. And at the very end, the best part, you'll have a personalized advising consultation with a student advisor like me, um, and we will help you get started on the pre-application. So it's very important that you finish this course and the instructions to enroll all are, are on our website. Um, in order to set that appointment so we can get started on the application process. Now, so the reason why these scholarships matter is that winners and finalists include them in these highly recognizable awards on their resumes for the rest of their lives. So even after you've graduated from grad school or internships, it's a title that you carry for out, throughout the rest of your life. And one component of UCI's national rankings is how many prestigious scholarship winners we have. And that's why this office exists to help you guys boost those numbers and our rankings. Um, they're not just about the money, but also personal development. Students to grow a great deal through the process. And um, even those who don't win will learn strategies that help them get placed in top graduate schools and enter into excellent careers. So I should note that um, many students apply to the scholarships that SOP advises for, but they're also applying to grad school at the same time. So um, you will have to defer, for example, if you win a scholarship, but you decide to go to a different grad school. And that's just like, you know, the way of life. You, you take what you can get. And um, either way, the process that you go through with our office is really beneficial. So for instance, a student recently applied to Fulbright to the UK. And although he didn't win the Fulbright, um, he formed faculty connections at his top choice grad school in the UK and planned a strong grad research project through our application process. And eventually he was admitted to the program and found external funding to study in the UK. So even if you don't get it the first time, you really got your foot in the door for many opportunities. Okay. Just making sure we're on time. Um, so many of you may be wondering right now, um, what do I need to do in order to win a scholarship award? And unfortunately, there is no list of prerequisites that every scholarship applicant must complete. Um, I've been at SOP for a year now, and every time I look at new applications and I go through all their written materials and journal entries, everyone is so different. No application is the same as you can guess. Um, and it's really about being you and finding the scholarship that fits you, not finding a scholarship and then you know, trying to um, adjust your whole, reframe your entire career tra trajectory to win it. Um, I've had experience with that myself and I can tell you that's a good piece of advice. So um, let's see. However, there are some trends among our winners that we hope will inspire you. 
So our winners customize their academic and extracurricular plans according to their own passions, and they seize relevant opportunities to reflect and revise. So their resumes will really shine through and show that this particular scholarship they're applying for is really matches with their interests. Um, they take risks and initiated action, but they do so strategically and with due con consideration of consequences. So failures are opportunities for growth, developing resilience and flexibility. Now, working with SOP primary advisors and student advisors and writing specialists, um, you'll learn to articulate your ambitions onto paper to make it look good to the scholarship committee. And I'm going to go through the following stories that will illuminate how recent winners went beyond the basic requirements for completion of a degree and really honed their resumes. So the SOP advising process. This graphic is actually directly taken from our SOP website, which you can do by just Googling UCI SOP. And it gives you really in-depth explanation of everything in case this is confusing for you. So um, let's see. Our student advisors and primary advisors serve as guides throughout all phases of the application process and encourage you to develop lifelong skills. So um, I kind of already went over this in the last slide. Yeah. SOP prep. So more specific details on this course in case you're interested is that it's intended for undergraduates with sophomore or higher standing with a cumulative GPA of at least 3.0. And the reason why we set that GPA is because we notice it's kind of like the threshold that, the minimum threshold that um, scholarship winners fall under. So recent UCI graduates may also participate if they are still within four quarters from graduation. So those of you who said your fifth years, or even if you recently graduated, you are still eligible to um, enroll in this course. And it's open entry, open exit. So you don't need permission to enroll or withdraw. You can just go ahead and do it on your own. And um, let's see, this is a screenshot that I took of the course. So once you enroll, these are the all the assignments that you'll have to do. There's nothing more. It's just everything on this page. Um, there are only really four journal entries where you're writing something. And each of them is about 300 word responses, give or take. And then um, the journal number five is the virtual advisor quiz that I mentioned earlier that will really give you um, a list of all the scholarships you're eligible for and the ones you're fit for. And then of course you have to attach all these other attachments so that we can kind of um, start categorizing you and helping you choose the right scholarship. Okay, so. I don't know why. Here we are, sorry about that. So the first scholarship I'll be talking about is the Truman Scholarship. Um, and it is an especially generous award for US citizens planning to go into government or nonprofit work in leadership roles. And because I mentioned US citizens, I should note that for any um, undocumented students, there are scholarship opportunities available for you too. Um, specifically listed under the, there's a section on our website that is for um, dream students. And there's another section called other opportunities with a bunch of scholarship resources, um, whether you're documented or not. So Truman will fund graduate study or law school as appropriate to your career goals. Winners and finalists have strong academic records, clear goals for graduate school and the future and have shown substantial involvement in public service and government activities. Examples of their leadership activities include, fa include founding nonprofits um, or clubs, teaching or mentoring, holding elected office in ASUCI, or serving on political campaigns or union organizing. So lo lots of politics stuff. And um, even national leadership roles in Boy and Girl Scouts. So if you must be able to reflect on a significant leadership experience in your life so far and write a brief policy proposal for this scholarship. And SOP convenes a faculty screening panel to nominate candidates. So um, it's a very competitive scholarship as are all of these 21 prestigious scholarships. So we do have to narrow down the applicant pool. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a few case studies so you get an idea of you know um, your chances at these scholarships and what you kind of have to do in order to land one. 
So Daniela Estrada is, was a highly motivated first generation college, college student who transferred to UCI as a sophomore. And she had to juggle a difficult work schedule and um, fun for her family. But at the same time, she joined the Sage Scholars Program where she was encouraged to pursue legal internships at a law firm and at the OC District Attorney's Office. She also developed valuable leadership skills by working with ASUCI, volunteers to establish a legal clinic and teaching Santa Anna, Santa Anna High School um, students in the Saturday Academy of Law. Daniela's career goal of becoming a public defender and making our criminal justice system more equitable for minorities and low-income people is a perfect fit with the mission of the Truman Scholarship for Public Service. And she won this award as a junior to fund law school. Like many Truman scholars, Daniela also dedicate, decided to defer graduate school entry to gain additional work and leadership experiences first, so she took a gap year. And after graduation, she taught English in Columbia through the Fulbright U.S. Student Program and worked as a judicial fellow. So those are the two other scholarships that she won. She's kind of really cool because she won three of the awards that we advise for. Um, she's currently studying for LSAT and applying to law school. Um, so this is her testimony. My professor told me about the Truman. So since you're supposed to be like recommended by a faculty member, he told me that I might want to apply to this scholarship and that was a great opportunity. First, I was very intimidated by the process because I looked at the application and it was very long. It's very intimidating, but I, I'm glad I applied because if I, I would have just found it intimidating and didn't apply, I wouldn't have, you know, obviously gotten the scholarship. But I guess the guidance that SOP gives is just amazing. And I don't think every school has that because when I went for the Truman in the interviews, I was talking to all the other finalists and a lot of them didn't have like an office like this on their campus, so they had to do the application basically by themselves. And SOP kind of guides you through the application and gives you recommendations as to how you can improve it. And the mock interviews are so helpful too. So when you go into these scholarships, you really feel really, really prepared. I definitely couldn't have done it without SOP for sure. Well, I think my biggest worry was putting in all the work especially if you're already really busy, putting in all the work and then maybe not getting it. But when I applied throughout the Truman, even if I did put all that work and ended up not getting the scholarship, I grew so much from the application process that even if I didn't win, like I was still happy that I, that I went through with it. I mean, it was just a bonus that I won, but really it was, you learn so much about like what you wanna do and why you wanna do what you wanna do. So this is a great way to really figure out where you want to be in a couple of years, you know, and, and why you want to do what you want to do. Cause it kind of... um, I guess just do your research, put in hard work, and stay confident and be positive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that testimony. Why is it not? Sorry, guys. My computer is like froze. It's like heating up because of all these apps I have open with Zoom. Okay, finally, sorry about that, everyone. Um, so the Strauss Scholarship is a, another one that provides $15,000 to fund an original community service project for undergraduates. And the majority going to a year-long community service project of your own design 
that you will submit a proposal for. Um, and the remainder is reserved for your own educational expenses. At least one year of previous leadership experience and a well-conceived project idea will make your application stand out. You also need to have time and dedication to coordinate the project if you get the award. So service projects can be international, local, or even on campus at UCI. For example, the Garden in AB has been funded in part by the Stroud Scholarship nominees. And you can collaborate with an already existing organization, for example, a volunteer service program that you work with, or you can start your own if you need to. And the typical applicant is a sophomore or junior with one to two years of undergraduate study remaining. You can apply as a senior if you are taking a fifth year. So you need to be um, an undergraduate at UCI. International and DACA students may also apply. Okay, and finally, my favorite. This is Fulbright, the one that Daniela won and is it's very popular with um, our students. So this fellowship was established by Congress after World War II to promote international understanding. This is SOP's most flexible and popular award offering placement in over 140 countries. Fulbright students conduct independent research, complete a year of grad study, carry out a creative project, or teach English in another country. You should have at least one year of relevant experience for the award type that you pursue. If the host country you are interested in uses another language for daily life, you should gain at least intermediate proficiency in that language before you apply. Countries that only require English language skills such as the UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada are especially competitive. So even though you don't have to learn another language, um, the stats are generally lower for those applicants. Grants generally provide round trip transportation, language or orientation courses, tuition books, a living stipend and health insurance. Juniors, seniors and recent alumni who are US citizens are eligible to apply. Apply one year prior to going abroad. There are many winners every year at the undergraduate, graduate and, the, and faculty levels. UCI has had 65 undergraduate winners and at least 47 faculty winners, including chemistry professor Kenneth Janda, information and CS professor Magda Zartke, pharmaceutical sciences professor Claudia Benavente, and public health professor Christy Koenig. And of course, these stats are higher now because um, we recently did some Fulbright advising. So case study for Fulbright is Valerie Dow. And she could have applied for a variety of grant types enough because she had enough experience tutoring and mentoring to make a strong ETA candidate, but her real past passion lied in research. So get Valerie was the child of first generation immigrants from France and Vietnam. In her Fulbright experience, she examined the relationship between the multinational labor market demanding critical competencies which are soft skills from entry level workspace workforce and the cultivation of skills by major universities in Saigon. She created the instru instructional model and mentorship program designed for students pursuing careers in the social sciences, which is why I included her in this presentation. And she achieved a master of public policy at the University of Chicago in 2012 and um, she's she conducted research at the University of Pedagogy at Ho Chi Minh City. She's currently a senior program manager at Stanford Center on the philanthropy and civil society, where she manages day-to-day -day operations of the Civic Life of Cities Research Lab, which is interdisciplinary research about how nonprofit orgs contribute to their local communities. She also supports scholar programming and oversees grant managements. So everything kind of went full circle for her. Um, next is Leanne Lupon. She was a major in chemistry with a concentration in education. And she also participated in CalTeach and the campus-wide honors program. So if you are a CHC student here today, you do have, you know, a little bit of um, boosting on your resume because of that title. And she served as a teaching fellow at the Breakthrough Collaborative in San Juan Capistrano, and she also taught through UCI's early academic outreach program in Compton for two summers. As a UCDC intern, she completed research for the US Department of Ed, and she also wrote an honors thesis on STEM pedagogy in lab environments. 
So after working as a student teacher in Costa Mesa, Leanne traveled to Uruguay to serve as a Fulbright ETA. And that was where she um, was awarded Fulbright. After completed, completing this Fulbright Scholar, Leanne taught at Portola High School. She's passionate about teaching low-income students in Title I public schools and aims to pursue a master's in education. So that sounds like a lot of um, new education majors. And finally, we have Amy He. She's a recent alumna and low-income first-generation college student in sociology and education sciences. She was selected for Pi Beta Kappa and received the Dan and Jean Aldridge Award for top juniors. She previously taught seventh grade pre-algebra and served as the Dean of Students at um, San Juan Capistrano, but she's also planned activities for international students um, at the International Center as a programs intern. She currently works with low-income high school students and or at CEO Scholars San Francisco and will soon travel to Taiwan to serve as a Fulbright English teaching assistant. At Stanford University, Amy earned a master's degree and single subject teaching credential in math. She currently is a math teacher for the San Francisco Unified School District. And next up, we have the Beinecke Scholarship. Let me... Okay, I see some direct messages that I will address now. Um, where do you guys upload and record? Where will this recording be uploaded? So this recording will be uploaded um, within the next two weeks, I believe, on campus groups. And I'm not sure what the access link you were referring to, Xiang. Um, if it was SOP prep, then that would be on our website. There's instructions to enroll with that link. And is this course separate from the UCI Canvas? Um, no, the SOP prep is on Canvas, but it does not count for UCI academic credit. And I'm not sure if there was a type of, oh, FAFSA, okay. Well, FAFSA be affected by the in scholarships. Um, I believe as with any scholarship or external aid, your FAFSA is affected, um, but you would have to contact their office to see exactly how. And um, we can we can help you if you shoot us an email though, but that's kind of like in the long run, figuring out which scholarship you may be eligible for and which one you want to apply to. Okay, sorry for the late delay on answering those. So anyways, Beinecke is the only award that requires a financial need. So by financial need, we mean like um, pretty, um, the high level of financial need and they will actually check on your, um, FAFSA if you are eligible. So that's why our student applica applicants for Banaki is usually a very small pool because most people aren't eligible. But all majors in arts, humanities, and social sciences except neurosciences are eligible. So that was part of our E11, Explorers 11 cycle. Okay, California Capital Fellows, which Laura won, um, is a program that is nationally recognized by public policy fellowships, which offer unique experiences in policymaking and development in each branch of government. Rooted in experiential learning and public service, Capital Fellows spend 10 to 11 months as part of a cohort working in a legislative, executive, or judicial branch office. Um, they are placed at some of the highest levels of California state government and assist state legislators, senior level executive staff and court administrators with a broad range of public policy issues and projects and are typically given assignments with a significant amount of responsibility and challenges. Regardless of your citizenship status, you must be eligible to work in the US for one year after graduation because this is where you will work as an intern. Um, SOP also recommends that applicants have one or more year, years of related work or volunteer experiences and a strong interest in public service or government. And a case study for Capital Fellows is Felipe Hernandez. Make sure we're on time. Um, he was a low income first gen student who worked nights as a janitor with his parents. At UCI, he collaborated with other SAGE scholars like Laura to found and lead a nonprofit organization called Mentoring, Empowering, and Nurturing Through Education, Mentee. 
This program seeks to enroll low income and minority youth in colleges. As a junior, Felipe won the Truman Scholarship to fund law school. And then after graduating, he worked as a Fulbright ETA in Columbia. So he's very similar to Laura. They both won um, the three same awards and one of them being Fulbright ETA in a different country. And I believe they are both in Colombia, which is pretty cool. Let's see. So in Colombia, he enjoyed playing flamenco with Colombian mu musicians and implemented the Menti model with his students, including a project to create a mural reflecting their community values. After returning to the US, he worked as a Senate fellow in the Capital Fellows Program while applying for grad scholarships. And he became the first UCI winner of the British Marshall Scholarship. So a fourth award on there. Um, he earned two master's degrees in education, policy and international development at the University of Bristol and evidence-based social intervention and policy evaluation at Oxford. Currently, he's completing his law degree at Harvard where he focuses on civil rights and volunteers as a student attorney on labor and immigration cases. He plans to eventually run for elected office. Okay, so graduate scholarships, which many of you were asking about, especially fifth years. Um, these scholarships are among the most competitive and prestigious scholarships in the world. So not just the United States. The oldest prestigious international scholarship, Rhodes, supports study at Oxford and Gates Cambridge funds study at Cambridge. The Marshall is funded by the British government and supports study at any university in the UK. A similar award for study in Ireland is called the Mitchell Scholarship, while the Swarsman Scholars Program supports a unique master's program in global affairs at Tsinghua University in China. All of these scholarships demand academic excellence, as you can guess, and significant achievements in leadership, research, business, or public service. And most recipients planned extremely ambitious careers in public service or academia. So if that sounds like you, go for it. Former heads of state such as US President Bill Clinton, Canadian Prime Minister John Turner, and Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull have all won the Rhodes. And just a quick note, Rhodes, if you're thinking about it, it they do require um, five to eight letters of recommendation. So you should get started on those. <laughs> The Marshall Scholar alumni include Supreme Court Justices Neil Gorsuch and Stephen Breyer and UCI Professor Emeritus of Political Science James Danzinger. Gates, Cambridge, and Rose are open to international students. Okay, and this is kind of continuing the grad scholarships. Um, we also advise or advise we also offer advising on three domestic grad scholarships in the United States um, through our Big Ten pre-application. So Knight Hennessy, Soros, and NSF. The most popular is the NSF Graduate Research Fellowship in which students and citizens and permanent residents are eligible to apply to support study in, user, in US research-based grad programs, including all traditional scientific disciplines as well as STEM education, social sciences, and psychology. NSF provides $46,000 for tuition and fees for three years, a living stipend, and research-related travel or internship allowances. Knight Hennessy Scholars funds the top grad students leaders in any discipline at Stanford University. So you can be of any major, um, but if you get into Stanford, then you can apply for the scholarship. And the program is intended to develop, to, to develop social change agents with the experience and vision to address global challenges, funding approximately 100 scholars per year. And this scholarship is relatively new. So um, although we know it is very, very competitive, the stats are not really showing a trend yet because the scholarship just um, opened a few years ago. And Soros, is exclusively for new or first generation Americans. So US citizens, permanent residents and DACA recipients um, whose parents, both parents must have been born outside of the US. So that is a requirement. SORA supports two years of any grad program for top students with a record of impressive achievement and extremely high ambition. That honestly goes for all of these scholarships though. <laughs> okay, so. Finally, general application components. What does the scholarship advising process entail? Now, during the advising process of two to four months, or two to six months, my bad, you will prepare, someone just joined. 
Okay, you will prepare multiple drafts of scholarship application materials. You can reuse many of the components of your scholarship applications in your grad school applications as you'll write similar admissions essays. If you win scholarships, you are also more competitive for grad school placement. Applications usually require three or more letters. It can be very difficult for faculty who don't know you well enough to write a strong and detailed letter, so it's critical that you meet with your faculty to discuss your achievements and specific goals early on. If one of your faculty seems hesitant or will be abroad with limited internet access, you should probably let them off the hook and ask someone else. You don't want to risk not getting those letters in. And if relevant to your scholarship application, you may seek a letter from someone who is not faculty, but has supervised you in public service, work experience, or other leadership positions. Always provide your letter writers with a copy of your CV, personal statement, and project proposal so they can include these specific details when writing their letter for you. And of course, always send a thank you note, which SOP will remind you to do. Okay, so proposal essays. These um, state your specific goals for a scholarship project that you want to implement. And when you're writing a research proposal, you should formulate an interesting research question. Um, to really show why this topic needs to be um, explored and review the relevant literature in order to convey a deep and nuanced understanding of the topic and provide details on your approach, methods, data collection, and anticipated outcomes. So have a faculty advisor or a grad student in your field review these essays, especially in the project proposal, because the form and content are highly discipline specific. Um, SOP, we obviously are not, we may not be in your field, so, we, but we will try our best to guide you through those writing feedback revisions. And for creative projects, you should demonstrate sophisticated knowledge of the artistic field and articulate specific contributions that you'll produce, like if it's an art publication or a performance. And many of the same principles include a um, apply, sorry, many of the same principles apply to graduate study proposals, including offering a plan that is as detailed and specific as possible. So if you go through the process with SOP, you will likely get lots of feedback from student advisors and primary advisors um, asking you to be very, very specific about what you want. And that goes down to the nitty gritty stuff like um, how much do you plan to spend or how much funding do you plan to allocate in this part of your project? Um, who's going to advise you? Where's the project going to go after you're done with it and you go off to grad school? Um, how will it, you know, impact generations to come? Things like that. So, um, all scholarship funding agencies expect you to articulate the value of your work for society. Your proposal should inspire their full confidence that their investment in you and your work will benefit the world for years to come. Next is personal statements, which I think is the most fun in my opinion, because you get to talk about yourself and your story. Um, it's an integral part of your application and many applications that you'll apply to, as we all know um, in college now. And these awards are designed to honor students who have a strong interest and background in their subject matter. So your personal statement should demonstrate this interest um, while also incorporating your own personal experiences. So using lots of anecdotes. And this is where story storytelling and writing abilities really shine. Um, and our office does a great job of giving feedback on each draft. So, um, you're, as you can see, all these steps take time. So you should not procrastinate. Start early and brainstorm ideas with your friends. I even think of, you know, when I'm just going about my daily life, like potential um, scholarship application essay topics. And although you may not be writing yet, when the time comes, you'll have all these ideas and it'll be a lot easier to be creative um, on a written statement. So, we, your drafts will be shown to a faculty advisor, SOP, grad students, and other mentors. This is a suggestion in order to implement um, external advice in your revisions. And you can make an appointment to view past winning applications for inspiration. So on our website, there is um, an, a link for scheduling appointments. Okay, here are some other you, sorry, campus um, resources that you should use and take advantage of. 
all the winter case studies you saw started as students just like you. I know it may be daunting, like even for me, I, I read their profiles and I'm like, I can never do that. Like, why am I even here? But um, they all started somewhere and they really honed their application to their own interests and their own passions. And that just, you know, took them in the right direction. So um, they began in your shoes, attending workshops like this. And so that's how you know you're in the right place. And now you now that you, ah, now that you know about the awards and the application process, um, what can you do to position yourself to be a strong candidate? Each award has different characteristics that they're looking for. Some may emphasize community service or study abroad, while others don't. But in general, if you can check off many of these criteria here on this slide, you'll be in good shape for any award. Common challenges include not knowing professors well enough to gain a strong letter, insufficient leadership or um, service experiences, and a low GPA. A competitive applicant will look different across all disciplines and career goal interests. Performing research, pursuing internships, and volunteering will demonstrate your commitment to your intended graduate study or, and career traje trajectory. Seek out good mentors, so professors, staff, or accomplished upperclassmen who can provide guidance during this process and let you know um, connections in your field. So leadership is a vital component, no matter what scholarship you apply to, and the way you choose to demonstrate leadership will vary based on your personal preference, personality, and style. A common theme in developing leadership includes um, starting small and building your skills through hands-on experience over several quarters or years. So if you want to pursue education policy as an education major, you should really um, be seeking out opportunities that show that, that reflect that um, intent. Now, SOP also facilitates Pi Beta Kappa Honor Society. And PBK is the oldest, most prestigious academic honor society in the United States. Here we are. Um, and it has very noteworthy members, including 17 US presidents, 40 Supreme Court justices, and more than 140 Nobel laureates. PBK provides exclusive networking opportunities and lifetime membership that's often covered by the campus. Um, you cannot apply, but you must be invited to join. Most people are invited in spring quarter as graduating seniors, but very few um, ex excellent students are invited as juniors. We highly encourage students to join and there's a lifetime membership fee um, and PBK scholarships that are, are available. So I noticed that um, PBK also gives like service scholarships and you don't have to be in this honor society to apply. Okay, we're wrapping up this presentation. Um, and I would like to let you all know that SOP is hiring. We're looking to fill these two positions. That's embarrassing, I was on the wrong slide. These two positions, my bad. Um, the student advisor, which is what I am, and the marketing and communications development interns. So applications are due February 18th at noon, as all SOP deadlines are always at noon. And you can find our jobs listed on the Career Center's Handshake website. But make sure that you follow the link and the instructions that say to submit your application through the Triple E Scout form. Um, most of you have probably gotten an email too in your UCI inbox. Actually, it was sent by me. So you could just type in my name in the search bar and you'll probably find it. Um, if you have any questions about, you know, like the job positions and the description didn't answer those questions, feel free to shoot our office an email or even reply to my email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, I like how we're on time. So finally, this slide that I showed prematurely, if you have any questions whatsoever, please refer to our website, which is right here and contact our office at the email above. We'd be happy to answer questions about hiring and scholarships. And with that, I want to thank you for attending this workshop and sticking it out with me until the end. So before I end though, I will check the chat again to see any questions that I possibly didn't answer. Okay. So Olivia asked, where can I find all these scholarships? I just wanted to make sure I qualify. Also, do we need to schedule an appointment with the SOP office first? Um, so first question is, um, where can you find all these scholarships? So 
I am going to pull up the UCI SAP website and link it in the chat so you guys can. There you go. I actually sent it as a DM. Okay, there we go. Now on that website, um, you will find a tab that says scholarships. And there you will see all of the deadlines outlined as well as um, a description of the scholarship. So that would be very helpful. And you can quickly see like, okay, if I'm gonna graduate um, in summer 2023, then I will definitely not be eligible for the Binding Key Scholarship. So that's why it comes in handy to have that. Now, the other part of that question was, do we need to schedule an appointment with the SOP office first? Um, so ideally you are supposed to complete the SOP prep course. And then once you've submitted all your journals and received feedback from us, then you're gonna have an advising appointment with a student advisor. But I've had a lot of students um, who were just interested and wanted to know more about SOP, but didn't know what, where to start. And they didn't start SOP prep and that's okay too. You can also um, schedule an appointment um, student advisors are available, but um, it is highly recommended that you do SOP prep. It's very self-explanatory, um, and by now you should probably know why you do it. So when I click the link for the course, it takes me to a separate canvas, like not UCI. Okay, yes, it, it should. Just follow that link. Um, it's on Canvas, but it's not through UCI because our office has its own um, scholarship account. Okay, do you know what time the Zoom drop-in hours are? So appointment availability will vary and you can go onto the appointment booking system to see um, what slots are available and who is like going to be scheduling the appointment at that time. But the drop-in hours is on our website. And right now we only have one student advisor who's doing drop-in. So I would, attend either one, it doesn't matter, but I believe it was on Thursday from like five to six, but check the website. There is a drop in hours under winter 2020 or 2021. Okay. What motivated me to become a student advisor for SOP? Um, so as you guys know, I'm a second year and funding college is a rough process. So I didn't uh, like qualify for financial aid. So I applied to a lot of external scholarships and I personally love writing. I'm an education major. So advising students is kind of like up my alley. And when I got the email in the um, campus wide honors blurb email to apply for this position, it really suited my interests and my skills. So that's why I applied. And I'm really glad I did, honestly. I'm not just saying that because we're in a workshop. Um, but even like remotely right now, it's such a great opportunity. Okay, mm, I'm in the School of Social Ecology and my postgrad plans focus on entrepreneurship and not grad school. Are the 21 scholarships you went over the only ones your office focuses on or are there any prestigious scholarships in the field of entrepreneurship? Okay, so yes, these 21 scholarships are, only, are the only ones that SOP advises for, but um, you are free to look at the other opportunities page on our website. Um, Let's see, but I'm not sure if you mean like you want to take a gap year to, you know, get entrepreneurship experiences, but um, the Fulbright by National Business Scholarship may be something that you're interested in. I believe it's only like offered in Mexico though. So you should check that out. Um, okay, I'm a junior at the moment, no problem. Do I still qualify for SOP prep? Yeah, of course you do. Um, um, SOP rep is eligible for sophomores all the way to recent graduates. So if you enroll, you'll be able to um, go through that process and you will be applying to either next year's Explorers 11 process or um, this year's Trailblazers 11 process. Um, you can look at the differences. I went over them, but you can still find them on the website. Everything that was in those slides and that is this recording will be on the website or um, campus groups. Okay. Thanks to all 40 of you who stuck it out to the end. <laughs> this was a really big turnout, but 
Um, I hope that was helpful for you. And as you guys know, because I keep stressing, feel free to email me or the SOP um, email, which is also on our website at any time if you have any questions about anything. Okay. Yeah, no problem, everyone. Good luck on midterms. I know week six is rough. You too, Monica. Okay, I'm gonna end the meeting now. Bye.